let's determine the intervals of concavity of this function and find any inflection points. To do that, we'll need the second derivative, meaning we'll have to take the first derivative, the derivative of a natural log function. The rule is it's a fraction where the inside goes in the denominator, the one plus x squared goes downstairs, and its derivative goes on top by the chain rule. The derivative of one is zero, the derivative of x squared is two x. We need the second derivative, so let's take the derivative of the first derivative, f double prime. Here we'll use the quotient rule, low d high minus high d low over low squared. So it's low, the denominator, d high, the derivative of 2x is 2, minus high, d low, the derivative of 1 is 0, I won't write that, the derivative of x squared is 2x, all over low squared. We square the entire denominator. And it will be very helpful if we simplify this. Let's distribute this 2, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2x squared, minus 2 times 2 is 4, x times x is x squared, over 1 plus x squared all squared. Finally, combine like terms, 2x squared minus 4x squared is minus 2x squared, over 1 plus x squared all squared. To find any inflection points and the intervals of concavity, we take this second derivative and set it equal to zero. It's a very similar process to finding the critical points and intervals of increasing and decreasing for first derivatives. Now, we want to see where the numerator equals zero and the denominator equals zero. The denominator is the function one plus x squared. That's always positive. Something is squared plus one, all squared. Hey, that's never going to be zero. That's always going to be some positive number over the real numbers. So we don't even have to bother checking the denominator. Our only solutions here will come from the numerator. 2 minus 2x squared equals 0. 2 equals 2x squared. 1 equals x squared. Or that x is plus or minus 1. The way we'll do this is very similar to the first derivative test. We'll take these values, negative 1 and 1, and place them on a real number line. This splits up into three different intervals. And we'll pick test values to test whether our second derivative is positive or negative on those intervals. So something to the left of negative 1, maybe negative 2. Something in between negative 1 and 1, 0 is always good. Something bigger than 1, how about 2? These will be our three test values. And we'll plug these into our second derivative to test whether it's positive or negative on those intervals. If our second derivative is positive, the function is concave up. If our second derivative is negative, the function is concave down. Now again, remember, 1 plus x squared all squared is always positive. And since we only care whether our second derivative is positive or negative, this part won't affect our calculation. If we just plug our test values into the numerator, that will be good enough. Let's do just that. If we substitute negative 2 into the numerator of our second derivative, 2 minus 2 times minus 2 squared. Well, hey, minus 2 squared is 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. 2 minus 8 is negative. That means our function will be concave down on the interval minus infinity to negative 1. Let's keep going. If we plug in 0 to our second derivative, just in the numerator, 2 minus 2 times 0 squared, 0 squared is 0. So we just get 2, that's positive, which means our function will be concave up on the interval minus 1 to 1. One more time, we'll plug in 2, 2 minus 2 times 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, 2 minus 8, that's a negative again. Our function is concave down on the interval 1 to infinity. Let's summarize what we have. We have our function is concave up from minus infinity all the way up to minus 1. I'll say also, u for union, 1 to infinity. Our function is concave down in between minus 1 and 1. Those are our intervals of concavity. Now, are there any inflection points? Inflection points are where our function changes concavity. 
either going from up to down or down to up. In fact, we have two of those places, namely at negative one and one. At negative one, our function switches from down to up in concavity, and at one, it switches from up to down in concavity, meaning both the x values of minus one and one are inflection points. To get the full point, we'll plug those x values into the original function, which was natural log of one plus x squared. If we plug in negative one, that would be natural log of one plus minus one squared. Well, minus one squared is one, we'll get natural log two. Something very similar if we plug in positive one, in fact, identical, one plus one squared, this again will be natural log two. So those two points are our inflection points because that's where our function changes concavity and we have the intervals of concavity as well. There's lots of good information in this video, so I would recommend rewatching if you need to.